This is why we have to continuously fight for our Second Amendment right. This video is brought to you by the Tactical POV Store. The Tactical POV Store. Guys, this is my new online store. You go to tacticalpovstore.com. You go right to the website. You can check out all my apparel, my gear, everything I've got up there so far. I'm continuously adding more. Put in code TPOV20. Get 20% off everything in the store right now. If you can't go to that URL, which you should be able to, but if you can't, you can get to it through my website, tacticalpovllc.com. Click the store up in the header, or you can click the apparel and gear down at the bottom. And it'll take you directly to my store. Check out the stuff that I have, guys. I appreciate you so much. I appreciate you subscribing to my channel and following me. Thank you. I truly do, truly do appreciate it. Really do. So this video I'm talking about, man, is here recently that heavyweight boxing champ Tyson Fury is calling for higher sentences for knife attacks. As you know, he's from the UK. UK has a gun ban. They've had it for quite some time. And this is, this has come about because his family member, uh, I believe uh, it's Miss, it's Burton. I'm trying to remember his first name. I know I'll get to the video here, but his cousin was stabbed, senselessly stabbed. It was a senseless crime. Absolutely. And I must I'm going to go over the video here that I found. It's audio and it's text in it with some pictures in it. So I'm going to read the text and audio and everything in it as well. And it's going to talk briefly. It's only like about a minute 36 or something like that. Just briefly about the story. And then I'm, uh, I'm going to give you some numbers and get this thing in perspective. Or should, you know, put this thing in perspective as far as why we have to continuously fight for our God-given right to self-defense to keep and bear arms here and understand that there are so many people all over the world who break their necks to give life and limb to get here to get a piece of this document that leftists wanted forever trash, okay? If it doesn't work in their favor, they want to set a match to it. Anytime they think they can get something in the Constitution working in favor, oh, it's about our Constitution, they preach that bull crap, man, okay? Trust me, they'd set a match to it this very second if they could, all right? And we know this. So let me bring this up here, and uh, I'm going to read off. Basically, I've screen you can read. You know, this is for a podcast because I'm actually going to start a podcast here soon, guys. It'll be the Tactical POV Show podcast. Basically, it'll be audio ripped from my videos here and be set up into a podcast here soon. I have more details on that here soon. I'm working on that as well. So let me get into this here and get this video. Shout out to the independent here because this is uh, from their YouTube channel. And um, let's get into this thing. Tyson Fury's cousin stabbed to death in a senseless attack. The cousin of boxer Tyson Fury has been stabbed to death in what police call a senseless attack. In a social media post on Sunday, the heavyweight boxing champion said his cousin, Rico Burton, was stabbed in the neck and called on the government to bring higher sentencing for knife crime. My cousin was murdered last night, stabbed in the neck. This is becoming ridiculous. He is carrying knives. This needs to stop, said Tyson Fury. ASAP, AK, uh, UK government needs to bring higher sense in night crime is the pandemic. You don't have the bad, didn't even get a chance to read that. As, uh, police said emergency services received multiple calls about disturbancing Goose Green. Uh, yeah, I missed that. Uh, see, Greater Manchester around at 3 a.m. in the morning. 17 year old boy and 31 year old man were found in the scene with stab wounds and were taken to Manchester Royal Infirmary, police said. Greater Manchester Police Superintendent Ben Ewart. Later confirmed that the 31 year old was Mr. Burton who later died in the hospital. Mr. Ewart said two men aged 21, 20 have been arrested in a connection with the attack. So that's, that's it on that, okay. Uh, 
I picked this video here because for one, it was short because I want to get to some other stuff about this and try to break this down because you guys know here on my channel, yes, I am a thousand percent supportive of the Second Amendment. This is what I do here and I talk about this stuff outside of some other stuff that interests me as well. I like to talk about like the last video you guys saw. Yeah, I, I'm, that was sincere to my heart, man. I'm telling you, people who deserve to get tased, man, for doing something extremely foolish or something like that. Yeah, you get everything you deserve. And I laughed my butt off at it. I'm not kidding. That was, I, I still giggle at that video. But anyway, let's get back to the story here talking about Tyson Fury. And I want to talk about real quick, the mindset, ma'am. And this is because of Europe, you know, England. This is a cultural mindset that they have. They don't understand our God-given right or what we have is our inalienable rights here under the Constitution. They don't get it. They don't. If you live or grow up in another country over there, you have to understand that they grow up in a cultural mindset that is different from ours. Okay. And what I mean by that is that I'm going to break down some numbers or some numbers here and, and put this thing into perspective of what people try to call out as far as trying to compare, should say, publications or media from the UK is trying to compare apples to oranges. Basically the cases that we have for gun violent deaths compared to what they have under a gun ban. And the thing that drives me nuts is that we have our own politicians here who, who look at Europe and think Europe is the model. Europe is not the model. Okay. We have to fight for this thing that we have here in America because we are exceptional regardless of what anybody on the left says we are damn exceptional. And I do believe that God has definitely put his hands on this idea of the United States of America as it being a beacon of light. I truly believe that because we have overcome some unbelievable feats throughout the centuries. We've made a lot of mistakes, but we learn from our mistakes. That's the thing. Okay, and, and here currently now, the mistakes that our politicians are making right now, they're basically repeating history, but that's another rant. So I'll stay away from that for right now, but let's get back to the story. As I said, well, let me bring this up. And uh, we'll take a look at this here. This has come from politics.co.uk. Uh, uh, this is, I can't see the date on this, but it is fairly recent because it has some recent uh fairly recent numbers here what it talks about i'm not going to talk about the gun control overview in this so i want to get straight to the statistics okay since the uk's uh gun ban that they started in 19 um in 1997 i believe i think it was december 17 1997 when they put a nationwide gun ban on their country here, but let's, uh, here's some statistics here. I'm gonna try to scoot through as quick as I can here. So gun crime has increased by 4% in one year with more than 9,700 crimes involving firearms taking place in the UK in the year ending March, 2019, a total of 9,787, 9,787 crimes involving guns took place. Okay. These are their stats that they're coming up with here. So, uh, in the five years to March 2019, offenses involving a firearm have also increased by 27%. According to the stats, by March 2019, a total of 33 people died as a result of gun crimes, three more than the previous year. Now, I'm seriously going to take that with a grain of salt, okay, because I'm not buying into that. I'm sure there's more this. You got to understand how the media works there in the UK over in Europe. The media is very socialist. They pick and choose to cherry pick numbers and pick and choose what they want to report. Okay. So this is coming from them, but, um, it says here in a year, March, 2019, 30.3% of all gun crimes incidents in England and Wales were in London with 10.5% uh, in the, Mid uh, West Midlands, 7.1% in West Yorkshire and 6.3% in Greater Manchester. All right, says that. Let's see, four in 10 Americans say 
They either own a gun themselves or live in a household with guns. And 48% say they grew up in a household with guns. At least two thirds of Americans adults say that they lived in a household with a gun at some point in their life. And roughly seven to 10, or seven in 10, including 55% of those who have near personally, have never, sorry, never personally owned a gun, say they have fired a gun at some point. Okay, the maximum penalty for committing a firearms offense under Section 5 of the Firearms Act in 1968. This is the Firearms Act 1968 in Europe. Okay, this is not here in the U.S. Uh, US. This is Europe, uh, which includes supply and possession, but not possession with intent to supply is 10 years imprisonment. The mandatory minimum sentence of those age 18 and over is five years imprisonment and three years for those age 16 to 17. Under Section 16 of the 1968 Act, it is an offense to possess a firearm with intent to endanger life with a maximum penalty of life imprisonment. The current maximum penalty for <laughs> illegally importing firearms or ammunition under Section 170 of the uh, Customs and Excise Management Act 1979, where the weapons are subject to be generally prohibited under Section 5 of the Firearms Act 1968 is a sentence of 10 years imprisonment and unlimited fine or both. Okay. This is how strict it is to own a firearm in the UK. They have some of the strictest gun laws in the world. Okay. They are amongst, they are definitely amongst the most. I would honestly, I think they're like top five in Europe, I believe somewhere in there. I saw that a long time ago, but let me, uh, let me put this into perspective here because here's another chart here that I also found here. This is uh statista. Stati yeah, statista or something like that. And what, what is this? Uh, yes. Yeah, Statista.com is where I found this at. And this is the only thing, the only chart I actually could find at the time when I was looking up this stuff here uh, to get me some numbers here of recent, as you can see, it said number of police recorded knife or sharp instrument offenses in London from 2015 to 16 to 20, 21 to 22. All right. Now, as you see, starting as it says from uh, 2015 to 16, you had 9,752. Okay. So 9,752 stabbings. 16 to 17, it, it increased. It went to 12,077. 2017, it went to 14,731. Increased a little bit more. 2018 to 19, 14,902. Then we had another spike here at its highest point so far. In, in 2019 and 20 with 15,928. Then we had a drop from 21, 20 to 21 to 10,150. And I would say that drop from it coming off of COVID uh, when you got to remember when UK was on lockdown. Okay. This is the reason why that number dropped. Okay. This is, this is a COVID stat. So it did drop down to 10,150 and, and now 2122 since the restrictions are being lifted now from COVID. Now you see the numbers starting to go back up, back up to 11,122. Now, with that being said here, real quick, I want to show you UK's population here. This is from World Meter, World O Meter. Okay. As of right now, live is saying, it's saying 68,659,911. These, this is the UK's population, excuse me, as compared to our population, which I do believe it is around, um, uh, ours is, let me back this up here and find ours here. I, I, I just had it. Matter of fact, I just had it here. Uh, this is actually a pretty crazy website, man. This is pretty cool. Uh, shows current world population. This is uh, this is wild. Who knows? Let's see if I can find it here. No, let's go back. But anyway, I'm not gonna jack around with it though. We're around 330. Just say 330 million is where we are. All right. So 
with that being said here, the mindset, man, is, as I said, it's cultural, okay? When you're born and raised in a certain culture and a mindset of certain, certain things like, such as this, like the UK, even before the gun ban, before then, it's just a mindset of what it is. He's Tyson Fury is calling for a strip for knife ban, stricter sentences. Last time I checked, murder is still a high charge, man. Whether it's done by a gun or a knife doesn't matter. Okay, so what if you're calling for higher sentencing for knife crimes? Well, th that's a murder. So what higher sentence can you ask for outside of the death penalty? I mean, I'm just saying, murder is murder, whether it's done with a gun or a knife. My thing is this, and I've always said this because of what I believe in so much is the fact that no one ever slows down to ask the question, what did I do to help ensure my safety? What did I do to be prepared for the worst? What did I do having my own self-awareness of what I do before I walk out of this door? If something happens, if something goes off, am I ready? Am I prepared? Okay. It's it, the mindset drives me insane when you've got, as I said, just you've got gun grabbing politicians. I say this because there are gun grabbing politicians on the right as well. I already know it goes on with the left. OK, I, I, I know the trash they spew. But it irritates me even more so when there are so supposed constitutionalists or ones who claim to call themselves conservative yet they still buck against the second amendment. Those rhinos absolutely irritate my ass. I, I can't stand frauds. I know what I'm getting from the left. The frauds on the right, man, they seriously irritate me, really irritate my ass. So, because I, I just can't stand a fake. I can't stand a fraud at all. Okay. But I say this because what do you do when, do you train? Do you, do you get extra training? Do you take courses? Okay. Do you study? Do you look at this? Do you do you, what do you do to in, to help ensure your protection? I can't ensure your life, but what do you do to put towards your protecting you, you protecting your life and your family? What do you do? Everybody's stuck on this kick about ban, ban, ban. You cannot legislate. You cannot ban something. You can't ban any weapon on this planet. You cannot ban it from someone who has an evil heart and evil intentions and plan on carrying it out no matter what. You cannot legislate any law against that at all. You can't control somebody else and what they going, what they do or what they're going to do, what they have in their heart. You can't control that. But one thing you can control is what you do. Okay. You can control that yourself. What do you do to prepare yourself for the world out here to protect yourself? What do you do? You can control that. You can't control somebody. You can't control this person over here, but you better believe you can control what you do. So I highly suggest this when I say this over and over and over, when I promote it, when I promote on social media, when I say it in some of my videos, I even say in this one, get more training. You are responsible for your own safety. You are responsible for that. Okay. It's not a first responder, which is the most bull crap thing that Jimmy Carter, one of, well, one of many bull crap things that Jimmy Carter even started was that crap. First responders don't do anything. Wait for a first responder to get here, like police or fire or some, you know, and then let them respond. No, 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 no. You are the first responder because it's happening to you right now. So that means you need to respond, right? Don't sit around waiting for somebody else. Don't wait on the government to do something. Don't wait on anybody else to do something. Stop asking the government to do something. The biggest thing you need to do is hold them accountable and make sure they uphold your God given rights. This includes the second amendment. All right. So stop asking them to do something because the government only knows one thing. When you ask them to do something, sure, let's infringe upon your rights because they don't know anything else. But they forever want to seek power. And the way they seek power is taking more rights away from you and me. That's how they do it. So stop asking the government to do something about this crap. Europe, you guys got a world of problems on your own for what you do. I'm only worried about my backyard right here. Okay. I feel bad that he lost his family. So I'm not saying him being insensitive about it. I do feel bad that he lost a family member. It's his family. It's his cousin. And it was a senseless act without a doubt. But how do you address that issue? Okay. How do you address that? They think it's just a, such a polite society and this and that of what you do. 
but yet stabbings went through the roof. As soon as they got, they banned your your right to, to to keep and bear arms over there, which they didn't even have a right. It was just on that. It's not even a constitutional right. But they just put a gun ban on. Knifings went up through the roof, man, and it's still high. You know, criminals just gonna move on to something else. That's what they always do. No matter what you try to ban, they'll find something to carry it out. It's amazing, man. It's amazing. I like I said, is stuff like this just really. The mindset people have, God help them. God help them, man. That's all I can say. Pray for him. Pray for his family. Pray for his family that he get peace, you know, as he puts his family member to rest, you know. And uh, pray for yourself, too. Make sure you stand up. Make your voice heard about this. Understand this. This is your God-given right, man. And make sure that you hold the ones accountable to make sure they preserve this right. All right. Because once they disarm us, man, it's over. It's game over. I'm serious. Fight to the end. Tooth and nail. Nonstop. All right. Guys, if you got anything out of this video, man, I appreciate it. If you like, share, subscribe. Make sure that you do that. Check out my store. Use code TPOV20. TPOV20. Get 20% off. Refresh the browser in case I put something up new that you haven't seen yet. Something pops up new. So, but thank you so much for hanging out and uh, just letting me talk a little bit. I know I haven't done a video here, but I just need to, I could talk about the second amendment and stuff like this all day, you know, all day, every day. Things like this really do bother me, man. Cause I just don't, I really can't, I just don't understand. Cause I don't, I don't live that life. I don't live in that country at all. But I do see the the atrocities that people have to deal with, man. The the their own their rights being violated by not just their government, man, but just by people alone. Now look at the crime we got going on here. Crime through here is going through the roof, and look where it's happening. It's happening in the top ten cities that in this country, and they're all Democrat run. But crime is through the roof. Why is that? Got to start asking questions, man. And start holding our politicians accountable. And vote for the ones who actually do support the Constitution, who do support the rule of law. Okay? Not rhinos. You can smell a rhino. If you're a true conservative, such as myself, I'm a conservative conservatarian, I can spot a rhino, a rhino in a heartbeat, man. Just ask them to see what they vote on. They buck against anything in the Constitution? Rhino. Okay. So anyway, that's my rant, man. I'm, I'm, I'm trailing guys. Listen, get more training. All right. You are responsible for your own safety. So get more training. I'll see you on the next one.